Hey, it's James, Father's Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got custody. You know, I don't know why people don't use more adjectives in their paperwork or in their oral argument. I know why attorneys don't do it, because they don't want to really fight that hard. You know, if I go to court and my baby's mom, say early on in my case, my baby's mom was withholding my child from me, I would go in there and say, hey, look, the mother is depriving the child of a father. The mother's depriving the child of a basic life need. Right after food, water, and air, there's nothing more important in the child's life than the love, security, and stability of a father. So she's depriving the child of a father. She's starving the child of the nourishment that comes from a father. She's using the child as a weapon, as an inanimate object, as a tool for her vindictive vendetta to punish me. But what's even worse is that she's punishing the child because we had a bond right after the child was born and now she's breaking that up and severing that and undermining the father-child relationship, alienating the child from the father and alienating her affections. Really, when people say the word alienation, they should never say parent alienation syndrome. If, if you had... If you wanted to actually know what the hell you're talking about when you go to court, you'd research it and pay attention to things. Parent alienation syndrome has been kind of discredited for a minute because the guy who invented the term committed suicide. And he made a bunch of money off of books. He's not a psychologist. And then stupid, moronic, airheaded, dumb, here goes the father's rights movement morons again. You know, some dumbass dads who lost in court create a chapter of the father's rights movement. Then they get together and say, hey, let's put parent alienation syndrome into the DSMB, which is the Bible for all um, mental health issues. Parent alienation is something that you do. It's not a mental disorder. That's like saying somebody has murder syndrome. A serial killer is a sociopath who kills. Killing is an action or murder is an action. It's not a syndrome. These stupid, retarded morons are out here campaigning and they look like a bunch of idiots trying to turn the actions of somebody into a mental disorder. Parent alienation syndrome. I commit the act of parent alienation. Alienation is the, a noun describing action or to alienate is a verb. See, if, if my gender wasn't so stupid and retarded, we would actually have some credibility, you know, with some people. We wouldn't say stupid, moronic, airheaded stuff like this. Let's get parent alienation syndrome. It hurts my feelings when my baby's mom withholds a child from me. So, yeah, I'm so aroused by this new movement of parent alienation labeling of mo mothers. Let's just put in the DSMB. I'm not going to think twice about what the hell I'm talking about. I'm just going to just emotionally react to the trauma I'm suffering from being alienated. And, and be stupid and look like an utter moron slinging mud at the women saying you should be called a parent alienation syndrome mentally di disabled weirdo. Social, we already got stuff in there for that. Narcissist, sociopath, bipolar disorder, anything that has to do with a control freak or mass manipulator, that's already covered in the mental disorder part. My gender is so retarded, instead of actually fighting in your case and fighting for justice, you'll spend time fighting to put parent alienation syndrome into the DSMB for years and years, and then it never happens because it was a retarded argument. And now here we are, a decade after they tried to do that, and nobody cares about alienation for the most part, even though it is an actual thing. Now, if somebody tries to say, oh, don't use that word alienation, alienation was a scam, and there's a whole alienation cult. I could say, Your Honor, or I'll say, Your Honor, this attorney over here is attacking me for using the word alienate. That's actually a word in the dictionary. What other words in the dictionary are banned in this courtroom? So you can flip somebody, flip it around. You can. There's always an argument or always something you can flip to the other side and make them look stupid. But when I go to court, I don't just do stupid stuff like your stupid attorney. Or like some of you guys, you represent yourself. Some of you, some guys, they're just so emotionally hung up on, I'm telling the truth. I should win in court. Get your freaking punk ass ego out of it. You are in the corrupt family court system. You have to play along. Wake the hell up. 
Do you want to win your little narcissistic, egomaniac, tit-for-tat game? Or do you want to actually get your kid? When you go to court, it's about putting on a show. I know this because I've been doing it 23 years. And some of you idiots out there, you'll sit there and tell me, oh, well, so-and-so said this, or my social worker said this, my child support officer said this, James. Like, you guys will grill me. How do you know that, James? How does that work? How do I have proof that that's going to work? And then I'll show you my winning orders. I'll show you testimonials from guys who won. And you still don't believe me because the formula I'm talking about takes some balls and courage. And you don't want to do that route because that's scary for your precious little sweetheart. But then people will text me or call me, hey, I found case law on this. Or, you know, a guy said, you need to go to the U.S. Supreme Court and updo, undo the family court jurisdiction. I'm not, I'm not I'm, I don't work for you like that. This guy didn't want to fight in his own case. He wanted me to change the entire system for him. Total diva, narcissist, little bitch. Anyway, that's a guy who liked to, you know, flash a gun in my DMs and then say that I'm a that I'm an idiot and I didn't do anything for him in an hour, hour and a half consultation because he had to go and do some legal research in his own state. I pointed to all the tools and stuff of where he needs to go. He's like, oh my God, I got to do something here? But some of you guys will tell me, Oh, well, my attorney said I can't go for that. Or my brother's cousin's sister's doctor said I should never go for anything more than every other weekend. Or my child support officer said this. Or so-and-so said that. Or I read an article. I read online. I watched a video. Why the freak are you telling me some loser-ass, bum-ass bitches uh, legal analysis? Did you grill the crap out of them like you do me? I don't know what, how do I know what you're talking about? How do you know how I know that works? And I show you, but then when some stupid ass idiot from a corrupt organization like CPS or the family court attorneys who are corrupt and all in on it, or a politician says you got to do this and that, you don't question it at all. This is why when you come to my page and you come to me, you have to recognize I know more than you. So you should listen to some stuff I'm talking about. But all you guys want to bow down and kiss the ass crack of somebody with a title like CPS or attorney or mediator or arbitrator or judge. You don't want to read the plain language of the law, which says you have equal rights and stuff like that, and go and tell the judge and tell everybody, I got equal rights. Why, why do I have to stick with every other weekend? Why can't I do 50-50? If I look at the law... And it says the best interest of the child and frequent and continuing contact with both parents like it does in Family Code 3020B in California, Texas Code, Family Code 153001. And I'm sitting here telling you guys what the law says. Your attorney didn't even tell you that. And you're arguing with me over what your numbnuts, dumbass attorney says, even after you lost over and over again. So my question to you is, what the hell is wrong with you? Wake the frick up. Stop going toward, oh, James's way is hard because it's hard work, and James is such an a-hole, and I don't like his tone, but my really nice professional attorney who's a member of the cult of the Bar Association that traffics children says this. Or CPS, I had somebody tell me, hey, CPS told me I should only go 50-50, not custody. Who the frick is CPS but a bunch of corrupt... That's the most common place that children are molested in traffic, and you're going to cite them as an authority? What the hell are you doing? Tell... Are you going to go to Michael Jordan's basketball camp and say, you know, all your drills here won't work. They don't work for me. My brother's cousin who made his middle school team's JV said I have to do it like this. Why the freak would you go to Michael Jordan's camp and talk about losers that are lower and below his level? Anyway, back to my main point. I'll go in there and say, if an attorney lies, I'll go in there and say, I just talked to somebody today. That attorney is aiding and abetting the mother committing the crime of perjury, making a mockery of the court system, violating the rules of professional conduct, lack of candor toward a tribunal, violating his oath of an attorney, and any ethical code that deals with honesty, the preamble to the rules of professional conduct. And he's violating Civil Rule 11. See, you guys will go in there and say, oh, um, this isn't true, and then just bounce on to the next thing. If I tell them five different adjectives that describe and make a colorful picture of what they're doing, then the court will pay attention to me and it'll resonate with them. Think about it. If you're telling a boring story, people will ignore you. Go one out, out the other. Use adjectives and clearly describe.